Today I'm here to show you how to install Wine on Ubuntu. Specifically here I'm going to be dealing with 22.04. As you can tell here, it also works with Linux Mint 21.x, meaning whatever subversion you want. Wine allows you to run Windows applications on Linux by translating Windows API calls into POSIX on Linux. It also works with Mac OS or BSD. That way you have a seamless experience with the Windows applications. You won't be emulating the programs. You'll actually be running them natively on your Linux system with a translation layer, which is a great tool to have, especially if you have a need to run some Windows programs in Linux that you just can't get away from because they are very useful on your Windows system. There's now a possibility to run them on Linux. So to install Wine on Linux, we first need to go to the winehq.org website. I'll post a link in the description below if you need to check it out. The first thing I want to do is start up a terminal. So I got one started, start your own. And in order to successfully run Wine, we're going to need the 32-bit cross architecture packages to be enabled since a lot of the programs are initially designed for a 32-bit architecture or operating system. So we'll have to run the following. sudo dpkg space dash dash add dash architecture. And then we need the i386 architecture. Press enter and type in your password for your administrative user. And as long as you don't get any kind of an error here, you have then successfully added the 32-bit architecture. Next, we want to download and add the repository key. So we want to do sudo mkdir space dash pm. 755 space Etsy apt key rings in order to make a new directory where we can save, download, and add the repository key from WineHQ. So after we created that new key rings directory, let's get down the actual archive key. In order to not mess this up, try and get it from the website, but it is sudo wget o Etsy apt key rings winehq archive.key https colon slash slash dl dot winehq.org slash wine dash builds slash winehq dot key. Once you have that, press enter and it will say that it has added the key ring to this location here. Once that's successfully done, we want to get the sources for the particular Ubuntu version that you have. Now there are multiple versions as well as multiple distributions that wine is available, including Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, Mac OS, SUSE, Slackware, and Free BSD. Make sure to check out the winehq.org website under the download section to see everything available. Since I'm installing this on Ubuntu, I'm going to select Ubuntu and go down until I see this particular one. For my version of Ubuntu, I have 22.04 running here, so I'm going to copy that to get the proper sources. You can copy in whichever one that you need and paste it in. Notice it says sudo wget, so it's going to get something from the web dash np in the etsy apt sources dot list dot d slash, and then from https colon slash slash dl dot winehq dot org slash wine builds ubuntu dists jammy winehq dash jammy dot sources. I'm going to press enter and that should add the proper source file. Next, I want to do after a clear sudo apt update. Once I do this, it's going to take a moment and update the repositories so it also reads from WineHQ. Notice right here it says dlwinehq.org, the wine builds for Ubuntu. Fantastic, we know we have the repos. Now before we install Wine, please smash that like button for me. It really does help me out. And especially if you enjoy these Linux tutorials. Also learn more about Linux with the free Linux terms flashcards at learn.savvynick.com. I have over 80 cards available for free Continuing on, we'll do sudo space apt install. Then we're going to install the specific branch that we want. There's a stable developmental and staging branch. Most of you will want the install recommends with the wine HQ stable branch. Press enter once you have that selected. And once things take off, it's going to say all the various things that will need to be installed for Wine to run, including libraries and other packages that need to be upgraded. It says it's going to take around 1.7 gigs of additional disk space in order to install it. If you're okay with this, press enter for the default option, which is yes. Give it a few minutes as it downloads things and installs all these libraries and packages. It might take a few minutes depending on your internet connection. It doesn't seem like we got any errors or missing packages. 
so we don't have to install anything else. I believe everything worked. So in order to test this, we can actually run one of the most basic applications with Wine. Let me clear things out so we can see things better. Type in Wine and then Notepad. Press Enter. Give it a few moments while Wine boots up. If things are working correctly, the Wine Mono installer will pop up. This helps you install any additional packages that you need to install with Wine in order for your executable to run correctly. So since we're running Notepad, it noticed we're missing a few things. I'm gonna hit install and give it a minute to install the package. This is actually installing Mono. There might be more that are needed. Doesn't look like it. Gecko, for example, might be something that might be needed. But once everything is said and done, we finally have Notepad. Awesome work. You can now use Notepad directly in Linux. Congrats. For example, file save as, you can save it somewhere like the desktop as a .txt file, be able to read it in Notepad as well. Watch if I do congrats, you have Notepad and then save it to my desktop. So I'm gonna do file save as, I'm gonna call it note.txt and save it to the desktop. It should show up, sure did, right down here. You can, of course, change things around, open other files, but I'll also congratulate you on successfully installing Wine if this came up. So I'm going to exit out and show you how to install a second package, especially if you want to manage things a little easier and not have to use the terminal. I suggest installing something called Play on Linux. And it's fairly easy to do if you do sudo apt install play on Linux all together one word and press enter. That will start the install. The default here is yes to install it. So I'm going to press enter. It'll take a few moments. It's not huge. It took me about 30 seconds. And once everything's installed, minimize things, go to activities, search for play or play on Linux. Should pop up kind of this Clover looking thing. Click on it. Now we can look at what play on Linux is. Sometimes you'll need to reboot the system in order to get the initial repos. Anyways, if you can hit install and let this load up as it grabs the various repositories for wine so it knows what packages are currently available okay so if we want the testing and commercial grade windows packages we can search for something let's just do zip for example and notice i have seven zip here if you're not getting anything below just restart things it'll typically give you a better list if you don't know what you're looking for you can always search so for example if i'd searched win look at all the various different packages that are available. You can go through this, but I want to actually install something for zip. Notice they have seven zip available for installation. I'm gonna select it and hit install. Now I'm gonna be guided through a wizard to install necessary packages. I'm just gonna hit next a few times and allow play on Linux to install seven zip for me. I hit next. Now it's downloading anything necessary to run this seven zip package including older versions of Wine if they're necessary, depending on the version of the package or software that they have installed. You might get asked to install extra libraries. Go ahead and install them using the Wine installer. Notice so far I've installed Wine Mono for a different version of Wine and Wine Gecko. I'm installing that as well to run 7-zip. Basically just keep hitting install as you get prompted. You can choose an installation method. I'm gonna download the program and hit next. And it asks you where you want to install it. Since it emulates things, it's saying it's gonna save it in C program files, seven zip, that's fine. I'm gonna hit close after that. And we should have seven zip available to us once things are finally installed. Look at that in the background. We've installed our first app using Play on Linux. Notice there's an X here. That just means it's not allowed to launch by default. If you double click it, you'll probably get an error that says untrusted desktop file. It doesn't know the developer here, so we gotta right click and just hit allow launching. That will go away then. Double click on 7-zip or whatever you've done installing and look at that. Now we have 7-zip being used here in Linux as a Windows program. Fantastic, you've used Play on Linux to install your very first program. It's a wonderful tool to use along with Wine so I highly suggest it. It makes installation easier for other Windows applications. Fantastic work if you've made it this far. I think that's all you really need to know about Wine. Explore it more on winehq.org or with that link in the description below. 
Let me know if you were successful in the comment section below. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.